Good morning and welcome to another online session. This morning I'd like to greet you all in one for name for Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Today my job again is very simple, just to introduce the speaker that will be blessing us this morning. But before I do so, I'd like to read from the book of Acts, the book of Acts chapter 1, verses 10 to 11. And I read in your hearing. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up to heaven? This same Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will so, will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. This same Jesus, the same Jesus that turned water into wine, the same Jesus that healed the sick. This same Jesus that cured the blind. This same Jesus that rose people from the dead. This same Jesus. Come on now. This same Jesus yes. can heal your problems today. This same Jesus that was with you through your tough times. This same Jesus who rose from the dead. Amen. Amen. This same Jesus who is coming back again. The theme of this morning is Jesus is coming again. I'd like to call on the speaker, the director of Living Power, Mashudu Ravengani. Amen. Thank you, Tender, for the introduction. And we are glad that we have been able to join us today in our service for this morning and uh, thank you for the introduction that we have received and our theme today is the king is coming the king is coming when you read from matthew 24 verse 7 and 8 it says for nations will rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms and there will be famines pestilences and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Where are we in the prophetic time clock? Where do we find ourselves? There is no doubt that we are living at the end of time, at the very toes of Daniel 2 prophecy, right before the coming of the Lord. Unfortunately, Many of us, uh, instead of being excited about what is about to happen, we are distracted, uh, more concerned about coronavirus and its impact on economy and in our lives in general. Instead of using this time to realize and to get excited that the King is coming again. When you read in John 14, verse 1 to 3, it says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Um, and I might go to prepare a place for you. Um, I will come again to receive you to myself so that where I am, you may be also. God is promising to prepare a place for us. Christ knew that as we go through this life, as we go through the challenges from day to day, uh, there will be things that will trouble us. There will be things that will trouble our hearts. There will be things that will trouble us from one day to another. And he says, let not your heart be troubled. Don't be depressed. Don't be distressed by all of those things that you see. And the question is, why shouldn't we be troubled when these things are troubling us? He says, because I have a plan. I have a plan for your troubles. 
I have a plan for the things that challenges you. Indeed, as we go through this life, God sometimes has a way of uh, taking care of our challenges, giving us temporary relief to the challenges that we face from day to day. If you are homeless and when you finally get a house, your tears are wiped away. You rejoice as you find a new house. And if you are unemployed and one day you finally get a job, you, you, your tears, there's a temporary relief uh, to your troubles. And if you are sick, you can take, um, uh, having a headache, you can take some tablets, a panado, give you a temporary relief to your headache. Um, but all of these are temporary solutions. Christ says, let not your heart be troubled because I have a permanent solution to all your challenges. And the permanent solution, he says, I go to prepare a place. And as I said the other day, our problems, our challenges will be relieved, will be solved at a place. Because as long as you wake up in Johannesburg, you wake up in Pretoria, you wake up in Devon, in Lusaka, in, in Harare, as long as you wake up in this world, if you get outside and you step on the ground and you find yourself you are still in this world, you know there will be troubles. It doesn't matter. The sun might be shining. It doesn't matter. You might still be having a job. It might not matter. Your health might be good. But before the sun set, trouble will come. Mm -hmm. And that's why he says, I go to prepare a place. A place. Uh, and as I go to prepare a place, I'll come back and receive you to myself. So uh, the solution to our challenges, the permanent solution to our heartaches and headaches, uh, the permanent solution to our sicknesses and disease, the permanent solution to the troubles of this world is in a place. And he says, I will come and take you and receive you to that place. It is that place that we look forward to. It is that place that our hearts long forward to. It is that place that we are excited as we see the signs, the pestilences, as we see the troubles around us. Uh, it tells us that we are not far from home. We are not far from home. Uh, the king is coming. The question is, how will this happen? How will this happen? When you read in 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 16 and 17, he says, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise up first. And we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. That's the solution to the troubles of this world. The coming of the Lord Jesus. Now the text starts by saying for, which means because the Lord himself, the text says the Lord himself. Now, I like the emphasis that the Bible puts sometimes. And I believe somehow that the Bible was written for preachers because the emphasis is what we see in this particular text. Says the Lord himself, not any other, but the Lord himself. In time past, we have seen him sending prophets and sending uh, many of his priests and, and, and others who came to send us messages, his angels, uh, when the time when the children of Israel were in captivity, uh, we see him sending Moses to be the one who leads them. When the, when there was no king in Israel, we see him using the judges and uh, Gideon and many others. Uh, and eventually we see God using the kings in Israel, David and Solomon uh, and, and many of the prophets that came through. And we see him in the New Testament sending his only begotten son. But this time it says the Lord himself. Mm. The, the significance and the importance of the occasion demands that the Lord himself, not a delegation, not a representative, but the Lord himself. 
Now, we need to understand in the political uh, sphere, uh, when there is an important function that needs to happen, uh, you know, they can send a mayor to represent the government. But if the occasion is of higher importance, they will send a minister. But if the occasion is even of higher importance, uh, they will send uh, the vice president. Mm. But if the occasion is of utmost importance, the president himself. Uh, no, no, no. This occasion is of such importance that it will not be the mayor. It will not be the minister. It will not be the vice president. It will not be the president. But the Lord himself. Mm. Uh, he, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Uh, the occasion demands that we bypass mayors and, and ministers and presidents and, and get to the highest level. He going to officiate on this event. It is of such importance that the Lord himself. And I'd like to declare, I have not been in occasion where the president is officiating. I have not been invited to big gatherings of such nature. I can't even remember the event where the mayor has, uh, is officiating where I was invited. But I want to declare even this morning that I have been invited to the event where the Lord himself, mm. uh, not the president but the lord himself i've been invited and i want to declare i have rsvp i have declared that i'm coming the occasion is of such magnitude that it's going to empty heaven because the lord himself will be coming what an occasion what an event if you miss all other events, if you are not invited uh, to some parties, if you are not invited to some uh, occasions of importance down here, make sure that you, everybody, whosoever will, whosoever will, has been invited, whosoever is alive, anyone can decide, whosoever believes can be part of this grand you know, uh, cosmic occasion when heaven will be emptied and the Lord himself will come down. Yes. The text says he will descend, he will descend. The second coming of the Lord, the second coming of Christ, when he shall come, it is the hope of all ages. It is the hope of all nations. It is the hope of all people. All the way from Adam, they look forward to this event when Christ will come and put an end to sin and sin's results. It is the hope of all ages from the time of Adam to, to Abraham and all the patriarchs and all the prophets. They look forward to the day in which God will come and put an end to sin and the result of sin. It is the hope of all nations and I want to declare today it is the hope as, as coronavirus is, is ravaging the whole world. I want to declare even today that it is the hope of all nations. It is the hope of Chinese. The second coming of Jesus. Is the hope of the Indians, is the hope of the Brazilians, is the hope of the Americans, is the hope of the whole continent of Africa. Our hope is in the coming of the Lord. It is the hope above all hopes. Mm. And that's why in the text that we had read earlier on, the angel says, This same Jesus. Yes, sir. Uh, that you see being taken up and they will come in the, in the same manner. And then John the Revelator talks about the same event. He's shown of the same hand and he says, Behold, he's coming in the clouds and every eye shall see him. You see, the, the, the two, the, the, the disciples saw him being taken in the cloud and the, and the angel says, This same Jesus that you see him taken in the cloud will see him come back in the same manner. And John testified and he says, He's coming in the clouds and every eye shall see him. Now, now that's the surety of his coming. That's the surety of his coming. But I want to declare that the coming of the Lord is the brightest of all hopes. 
as we live down here sometimes our our road gets dark sometimes it gets difficult sometimes it's hopeless sometimes we are depressed sometimes we are distressed and sometimes the road gets dark and it is only the hope in the second coming of Jesus that brightens our journey that brightens our way to know that even though things fall apart to know even though things don't work out but one day he shall come mm. and when he shall come he will turn things around see when the road gets rough when situation becomes hopeless when we lose our loved ones when we lose our jobs when we lose our families there is a hope that there is a place where we shall go and never part again there is a place which God has prepared you see it is also a hope above all hopes you see when I am sick I can hope that one day I'll get well. Maybe I might never get well. I might end up dying. Uh, when I'm unemployed, I can hope that maybe I'll get a job. But maybe I might never get a job. I might remain destitute. When I have no home, I can hope that one day I will receive a home and I'll be like other people. I can hope. But even that hope might never materialize. Uh, uh, but I want to declare that the second coming of the Lord is the hope above all hopes. In fact, it is the fulfillment of all hopes that have failed. Yes. Because when he shall come, those who died believing in him, sick without getting healed, when they shall, when he shall come, the Bible says this corruptible shall put on incorruption. This mortal shall put on immortality. When he shall come, uh, the sick will be healed. Uh, uh, those who died with HIV AIDS, those who died with cancer cells, those who died with all kinds of disease, coronavirus, when they shall come, one day when he shall come, you will look at them and ask them and say, where is your HIV? And they will look at us and say, it's gone. Where is your cancer cells? It's gone. Uh, where is it? Uh, the pain you used to have? What, what happened to your high blood pressure? It's gone. Mm. Because this corruptible shall put on in corruption. And indeed, for those who are homeless, we're going to a place. The Bible doesn't say we're going to have houses in heaven. It says mansions. Mm. They shall be mansions prepared for us. So if you never get a house, uh, the second coming of the Lord is is a double portion of the fulfillment of everything that failed down here mm -hmm. because even if i get healed of of high blood pressure or whatever sickness i'll get sick again mm -hmm. but when we shall go there the tree the leaves of the tree uh, are for the healing of the nation sure. we shall never be sick again so the second coming of the lord will be the fulfillment of all our hopes the, the lame will be able to walk again those whose legs were amputated will jump and hop with their leg, new legs again whatever we missed out here and that's why i say to my people to the african people whatever you do don't miss heaven whatever you do whatever we didn't get down here make sure you make it to heaven because heaven will be the fulfillment of all our hopes then he says he shall come down with a shout he will not be a secret he shall be audible it is clear that when our loved ones die they are not going to heaven because when he shall come he doesn't come and steal them in silence no 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 when he shall come uh, they shall come with a shout uh, everybody will hear him uh, it shall be the shout of victory uh, a shout a conquering shout free at last thank god almighty we are free at last it shall be a shout it will not be in silence and then it says with the voice of an archangel and John 5 verse 28 and 29 he says marvel not at this for an hour is coming when all who are in the graves shall hear his voice and those who have done good to the resurrection of life those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation the fact is that an hour is coming when all 
who are in the graves shall hear his voice. Mm. They shall hear the voice of an archangel and the voice will be calling those who died in Christ. They shall be calling them by their names. But those whose books are written, in, these names are written in the book of life. They shall be called out of their graves. The question today, is your name written there? Have you registered your name? Have you made a reservation so that if he comes tonight, if he comes tomorrow, if you die tomorrow, that when he shall come, you'll be able to hear the sound of his trumpet. Not only with the voice of an archangel, but it says with the trumpet of God. And somebody says, the trumpet shall sound. It shall sound from the east unto the west. You see, the voice of the archangel is calling upon those who are dead. You shall hear his voice. But the trumpet is taking the attention of the whole world. It's bringing the whole world into an attention. The trumpet is declaring the end of the great controversy. Uh, the trumpet is shouting to red cut the devil. To say your time of harassing God's people is over. The trumpet will sound to say it's over. It's over. It's over. The life of sin is over. It's over. And my imagination takes me to that day. When the trumpet shall sound. Maybe others will be gathered in the stadium. When suddenly, in the midst of the stadium, in the FNB stadium, they can hear the sound, not from the, from the referee, but they can hear a sound coming from the trumpet and the trumpet sound and people will be wondering what's happening but maybe somewhere there in the stadium there will be people who are ready and when they hear the sound of the trumpet they will stand up and raise up their hands the king is coming yeah. the king is coming yeah. maybe others will be in a lecture theater or be in a school and listen to a professor telling them that they come from monkeys and that a chimpanzee is their uncle and then and, and, and so on and so on of all kinds of stories when suddenly in that classroom they can hear the sound of the trumpet and as they hear the sound of the trumpet one student will stand up there and because he knew the lord and he says the king is coming the king is coming yeah. others will be driving on the highways when suddenly there is a traffic jam as they hear the trumpet sound it is a sound they've never heard before and there's a sound was sounding the cars will come to a standstill and people will be hooting we want to go we're in a hurry and they can hear the sound uh, reverberating through the whole universe and as they hear the sound somebody will come out of the car and lift up their hands the king is coming the king is coming maybe others will be at the airport rushing out mm. so that they can quickly leave in the morning so that they can have lunch in london and and have supper in paris and and, and, and when suddenly when they're right there at the airport uh, all the planes are grounded as they hear the sound of the trumpet and as the trumpet sound someone will be wondering right there at the airport maybe there will be one cleaner maybe there will be one janitor who is prepared and he will stand up and say the king is coming the king is coming what a day what a day it shall be when the king himself comes oh my imagination takes me to that day when the king comes yeah. uh, i imagine myself on that day that maybe i'll be somewhere when uh, maybe i'll be preaching maybe i'll be doing some online preaching uh, to the saints maybe it will be during a certain lockdown uh, when i'm busy there preaching yeah. and, and and while i'm busy preaching i hear the sound of the trumpet and i can hear the angel gabriel calling my name and i will say to the online viewers Please forgive me, yeah. for I have to go. I need to meet the Lord in there. Sure. But maybe, maybe uh, I would have died. And, and when right there in one of those freezers, drawers in the mortuary, mm. while I'm there, I can hear the trumpet sound. Yeah. I can hear Gabriel call my name. I'll kick open the drawer and I will come out and as I come out I'll say to the security guard I'm sorry I, 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 I can't pay you now but I have to go for I need to meet the Lord in the air. Mm. 
maybe I would have died and it would be my funeral and some of my friends will be trying the best they can to stretch the truth to try to talk about how good I was and exaggerate a thing or thing or another thing there when when right there in the coffin I can hear the trumpet sound yeah. and while I'm there I can hear the trumpet sound and I can hear him call my name I'll kick open and I'll jump out and I'll say to the pastor I'm sorry mm. and to the MC uh, you can continue with the funeral lunch but I have to go yes, for I have to meet the Lord in the air come on now maybe 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 I'll have died and it will have been years and I've been buried and maybe where I've been buried they have built houses and, and and somewhere under the house right under the house I hear the trumpet sound and I can hear Gabriel call my name uh, and, I, and I'll tear open the house and I'll pop out from the ground and I'll dust myself a little bit and I'll say to the owners of the house I am sorry I hope insurance will pay but I have to go for I need to meet the Lord in there yes, yes, what a day what a day it shall be when the king comes. Come on, what a day. What a day it shall be. When he shall come in the clouds, when the trumpet sound. The question is, will you be ready? Will you be ready when the trumpet sound? And I've come to tell you it won't be long. It won't be long. And then the apostle says, then the dead in Christ will rise up first. The, the dead in Christ. Now, it is important that uh, the apostle is distinguishing the dead. Uh, so, today when you go to the graveyard, uh, the dead look the same. Uh, similar tombstones, uh, similar looks on the outside. Uh, they all look the same, but they're not the same. Uh, the apostle says, if you go to the graveyard, there are two kinds of people. They are the dead in Christ and the others. They are the dead in Christ and the others. Um, so the dead not in Christ. The question is, how did they start off? Being, how did they end up being the dead in Christ? They started off being the living in Christ. Mm. They started off being the living in Christ. And I want to declare to you, it's much more harder to live for Christ than to die for Christ. Let me repeat that another way. It's easier... To die for Christ than to live for Christ. You see, if somebody comes here with an AK-47 and he says, anyone who wants to die for Christ, I raise up my hand, shoot the bullet, gone, dead, fine, waiting for the trumpet, I'm okay. It's easy. But living for Christ is hard. Because when you live for Christ, people get on your nerve. People irritate you. People hate you. People belittle you. They look down upon you. They trample you. They, they talk about you. They gossip about you. They scandalize your name. They stab you on your back. It is not easy. The very people you worship with, the very people uh, you said you're on a journey to the promised land with, these are the very people who will do horrible things behind your back. It is not easy to live for Christ. It's easier to die for Christ, but living for Christ is not easy. Now, these are the ones who are the dead in Christ. Now, when they were alive, maybe they were looked down upon. Maybe they were not invited to important gatherings. Maybe they didn't drive the latest and the best cars. Uh, maybe sometimes they struggle to just have enough money for a maize meal. But they were the living in Christ. And eventually they died in Christ. And then the Bible says, we'll rise up first. We'll rise up first. Now, they will rise from their graves. Oh, we will rise again. And I, I want to declare to the devil, whatever you do, bring it on. You can, you, you can scandalize my name. You can talk bad about me. You can bring disease. You can bring sicknesses. You can bring all kinds of struggle. You can bring financial trouble. Whatever it is. And eventually you can put me down to the grave. Eventually you can make sure that I die. But I've got news for you. I will rise again. It doesn't matter 
what happened to me. It doesn't matter what my life becomes. But one day, when the trumpet sound, I will rise again. I have within me a seed uh, that will germinate and come out of the graves. So it doesn't matter what you do to me. I will rise again. Mm. That's the hope. And that's why I'm not afraid. I can tell the devil, bring it on. Bring it on. Bring the best you have. What is it that you have? Is it death the best you have? No, even that I'm not afraid. Because today, while I'm alive, you see, the Bible says, those who believe in him have passed death into life. So today, I have eternal life. So when I die, I'm not afraid of death. So the Bible says, we'll rise up first. We'll rise up first. So they will not miss out on the great spectacular event. So when Christ comes back, the one thing he's going to deal with first on the agenda is to deal with the question of death. The first item on the agenda is to address death. So when he shall come, the dead in Christ will rise up first. It's addressed first. We're dealing with death first and deal with death once and for all. And we, then we who are alive. So the dead in Christ rise up first. And we who are alive. Now, it is important to realize that he says we. He doesn't say everybody. He says we. We. Not everybody who says Lord, Lord, but we. Not everybody who is a member in good and regular standing, but we. Not everybody who goes to church every week, but we. Not everybody who holds position, but we. Not everybody who preaches and talks about Jesus and sings about Jesus, but we. Not everybody who makes the claims of Christianity, but we. We. Why we? We who believed in him. We who are born again and baptized. We whose lives have been turned around and who have died to sin and live for Christ. We who have saved and sanctified, but we. We who, who have decided to follow Jesus. No more turning back. No more turning back. But we. We who have made up our mind. That I would rather have Jesus than anything that the world can give. But we. We who walks with him and talks with him through the journey of life. But we. Not everybody. But we. We who are alive, we who are alive physically and spiritually. You see, there are, there are many who, who are alive physically, but they are not spiritually alive. There are many corpses that are listening even today. There are many who are dead to sin and trespasses. There are many corpses who wake up in the lockdown and go to the shower and shower their corpses and polish their corpses with lotions and Vaseline and Glycerine and make their corpses look good and, and go in the corpses, go and eat something. There are many corpses who are dead. Dead. Dead to see. Dead just waiting for a funeral. But we who are alive, we who, who are alive to Jesus. Uh, we who, who, who stand up for Jesus. Because the dead cannot stand. Uh, the dead cannot talk. Uh, we who stand up for Jesus. We who confess Jesus with our mouths. We who are not just physically alive. But spiritually alive. And remain. And remain. 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 Uh, when others have died. But also remain when others moved away from the truth and, and move on to fables and created things by man. We who remain as the remnants of God, we who remain holding on to the truth to keep the commandments of God and, and have the faith of Jesus, we, we, mm. we. And then the apostle says we shall be caught up together in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Uh, the living us, the dead are separated. The dead in Christ and the other, the dead not in Christ. Even the living will be separated. 
uh, there will be the others and we. There is we and the nation today. There is a separation. Uh, there are those who are ready today and those who are unprepared. And the Bible tells a sad story about the unprepared. It says they will lose their minds because they will go to the mountains and say, Fall on us and hide us from he who is coming. Whereas the others will lift up their hands and they shall glorify him and say, this is our Lord we have waited for and he will save us. Uh, what a day, what a day. Uh, those who are ready, they, they will come out of their graves and, 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 and celebrate. And now the Bible says, um, we shall be caught up together with them. So we who are alive together with the dead in Christ, we shall be caught up together in the clouds. And, 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 and when we caught up together in the clouds, we will defy gravity. We will start moving higher and higher. Mm. Uh, and, and, and firstly, we start moving above, uh, above uh, the cars. And the next we are above the houses. Next we are above the trees. We, we keep on going higher. And higher and when we look down we realize that there is a deacon still down there what is he doing so we find there is a pastor down there what is he doing the elder the deaconess what are they doing there and we keep on going higher and higher it became clear that we have made it we have made it we start giving each other high five thank you jesus we have made it people started hugging each other they start connecting with the other of friend one we made it we made it thank god almighty we are free at last Free from sin. What a day. Mm. What a day. As we go higher and higher, we shall behold him. Our eyes will be focused on him. And I, like the songwriter, oh yes, I, I, I want to see many patriarchs. I want to see Abraham. I want to see Joseph, I want to I wanna see David and, 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 and many of the, of the great people. I want to see Paul and I want to see Timothy and, and all the other great apostles. But most of all, and above all, I want to see Jesus. I want to see Jesus for he is the one who died for me. I want to see him. I want to be with him. And the apostle says, and thus we shall always be in his presence. And in his presence means no more tears, no more pain, no more struggles. Daniel concludes this as we conclude. Daniel puts it well in his own way in Daniel chapter 12. Daniel chapter 12 verse 1 and 2. He says, at that time, as we conclude, Michael shall stand. The great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people. And at that time your people shall be delivered. Everyone who is found written in the book. And in verse 2. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some to everlasting life. Some to shame and everlasting contempt. As we conclude the story is told. About a man who was a preacher. And this preacher had Two sons who were great fans of Chicago Bulls. It was during the time of Michael Jordan fame. When Michael Jordan was leading the Chicago Bulls, they, they were at their prime. They were unbeatable. And these two sons were great fans of Chicago Bulls. And on this particular night, it was late at night, 10 o'clock at night, uh, the Chicago Bulls were losing. They were losing. And as they were losing, it was half time. And uh, the boy says to the father, We are going to sleep. We are going to sleep. And the father says, How can you go to sleep when you are losing? How do you go to sleep when your team is losing? The boy says to the father, Father, we are not worried. This is just half time. Mm. This is just the first half. In the second half, Michael shall stand. Come on, and when Michael stands, mm. it shall be a whole different game altogether. We are not afraid. We are not afraid to go to sleep. 
We're not afraid of death today. We're not afraid of troubles today. We're not afraid of coronavirus today. We're not afraid of death. We're not afraid of challenges. We're not afraid to go to sleep. We're not afraid to go to the grave because we know this is just the first half. Uh, this is the first half. It seems like we're losing. It seems like the devil has got people on his side in majority. It seems like the devil is winning. It seems like those of us who believe in Jesus are nobodies. It seems like we're going nowhere. It seems like we're losing as sin and sinfulness abound. It seems like we are losing. But we're not afraid to go to sleep because this is just the first half. Yeah. In the second half, Michael shall stand. Yeah. Uh, when Michael shall stand, he will take off the rope of being the priest uh, uh, and he will put on the rope of being the king of kings and the lord of lords. And, and when Michael stand, he will yeah. say to Gabriel, take up your trumpet, blow the trumpet, yeah. let's go down to take our children. When Michael stands, mm. it's a whole different story. It's just the first half now. When Michael stands, it shall be a new story. Yeah. The question is, where will you be when Michael stands? Yeah. Where will you be when he shall stand? Will you be ready when Michael stands? It will be too late to repent. It will be too late to get your house in order. When Michael stands, things will be too late. But today, when you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Today is a day of salvation. Today, when you hear Jesus talking to you, it says, come unto me, who are tired and heavy laden. I will give you rest. Come to Jesus. Come, on, come, to, Jesus. come to Jesus. Come today. Come, to Jesus. come today. He will take your life. Yes, he will turn it around. And he will make you a new creature. So that when he shall come, mm. you will be ready. You will be among those who lift up their hands. Yeah. And says, this is our Savior. We are waiting for him and he will save us. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are grateful for the opportunity you've given us today. And our prayer, Lord, is when Michael is dead, mm. we want to be ready. Make us ready today. Accept us mm. as we are. Change us. Make us what we ought to be. Bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm.